Now this video is another video in a series of MIGS surgeries. In this video, we will demonstrate the use of the KDB blade, the Kahu dual blade for doing a goniotomy. Now this blade is actually a blade which is an amazing piece of instrument and you can see it has a sharp enclavating edge and it has got two border edges of the blades which are designed to go and actually scrape off the trabecular meshwork and with the dimensions of the blade are absolutely precise to scoop out the trabecular meshwork and also create an opening without causing much damage to the surrounding structure. So we start by making a side port or a main wound. Usually I prefer doing these surgeries after removal of a cataract because it makes the anterior chamber deep and gets a better exposure of the whole angle and the uh, trabecular meshwork. After instilling viscoelastic, cohesive viscoelastic, we instill some another amount of cohesive viscoelastic onto the cornea, followed by putting a prism lens. You have to ensure that there is no ooze or air bubbles in the anterior chamber or under the prism lens. Once that is done so, you angulate the KDB blade exactly into the trabecular meshwork and do a sweeping movement without exerting much pressure and as you can see, a very clean piece of trabecular meshwork can be shaved off, creating an opening in the canals of Schlem. Now, as the design of the blade is amazing, you can also see the scraped tissue being collected within the blade. Now, who are the good candidates for this particular surgery? Primary open angle glaucomas, all situations where you are able to visualize the trabecular meshwork, where the trabecular meshwork is causing problems for the outflow. There are some patients where there is a new vascular glaucoma, uveitic glaucoma or elevated episcleral venous pressure or any reason for a poor view of the angle should be avoided. So as I discussed, we proceed by removing that cataract in this particular patient. Once the cataract is removed, you have to ensure that the incisions that you made are slightly uh, less limbal and there is no ooze of blood coming from there because this blood can sometimes encroach under your gonioprism lens and uh, cause some obscuring of vision. Another thing we need to take care is that we have to use always use a cohesive viscoelastic. Before you do that, it's a, always a good idea to add a meiotic. In this situation, we are using pilocarpine. So I have implanted the IOL after removing of the viscoelastic from behind the IOL, we will instill some pilocarpine and you will notice that the pupil starts shutting down. After that, we instill some cohesive viscoelastic. Now this viscoelastic is instilled and make sure you inject it in the angle area exactly opposite to the wound. Make sure that there are no air bubbles in the interior chamber because they will interfere with your visibility of the angle. After that, you tilt the patient's head away from you by approximately 35 to 40, 40, 45 degrees. As you say, see here, I am shifting the patient's head. Now, shifting of the patient's head gives you a very good view of the tabular meshwa. In case you have not done so, you will have a bad end face view. We will see we push more viscoelastic onto the cornea, again ensuring that there is no blood and no air bubbles there. Now you put in the gonioprism lens. Now after the gonio lens is put onto the cornea, now you zoom in and as you can see, there is a very, very clear view of the TM. Now once this view is ascertained and confirmed, you can now either zoom out from your microscope to get a better view of the entry point through the side port or if you are comfortable, even in the same zoom, you can encroach in. And now, with the plate of the KDB blade running parallel to the trabecular meshwork, with slight amount of pressure, you can do this sweeping movement. And as you can see, there is a complete shaving off of the trabecular meshwork. You need to be very careful. Sometimes if you do a posterior attack, you can cause aridodialysis in these patients. So it is recommended that you need to be careful before you do this step. It is recommended to do this procedure in at least two to three clock hours. So you can do 
different techniques which I'll be sharing in an animation. Now I've done one, one and a half clock hours. Now I'm doing inside out technique. So the first process was from going in the clockwise direction and now starting from the other edge of the goniostomy which I had created, I sweep the angle again in the opposite direction. Now this is inside out technique where in both the situations my KDB blade is moving from center to periphery. Now another technique is called outside in where your KDB blade can actually be moving from two different directions coming towards the center. As you will notice that we've created one sector and then from another sector coming towards the center. This is one other technique. You can also do the technique of inside out, which I did demonstrate in my surgery, the live surgery, which you saw. Here, you again make sure that the foot plate of the blade is running parallel to the TM meshwork. Scoop the blade, scooping out the trabecular meshwork, and then starting from the initial part of that, completing it in another quarter. So then you can, can have approximately uh, done goniotomy in two to three clock hours. Now, this is the third technique which you can do. In this technique, you can actually do like small pitching movements. As you dig in a road or sometimes you dig a field, you can do this particular procedure. All these situations can work best and can be as, as per surgeon's comfort. Now, once having done so, you keep the viscoelastic instilled in the eye for some time. This ensures that the little bit of ooze of blood which is coming from the TM is stopped and controlled. That gives enough time for the blood to clot. I normally like to wait for around two minutes plus and there you see, I have not removed the viscoelastic till now. I have, there is a slight amount of ooze in that area. I will go and try and remove the tissue which was scraped off by the KDB blade. I'm trying to peel out the tissue of trabecular meshwork. You can actually see that tissue. It's actually totally scraped off. I pulled some part of the tissue out. You can see there is some ooze in the interior chamber. But by now that bleeding has stopped. I've already waited 2-3 minutes with the viscoelastic inside. Now I'll just go in that area with a slight amount of aspiration. I'll remove that. One word of caution, try avoiding going very near in the angle where you have just done the procedure because sometimes there could be a very small clot which you can dislodge and cause a rebleed or the turbulence of the fluid can cause rebleed there. So avoid that area. Just clean the anterior chamber and there you see that the whole anterior chamber is totally cleaned up. I am just scraping off some loose remnant tissue of the trabecular meshwork, which was floating around in the angle. Also, another tip is do not suddenly decompress the eye uh, while coming out with your aspiration uh, instrument. Leave the IOP slightly high to start with. There are some authors which do recommend leaving an air bubble inside. But somehow I am very comfortable once I've seen that there is no active bleed. I leave and fill the anterior chamber and seal the wound and the surgery is over. This patient had a very beautiful response to the surgery within four to five days and is doing very well. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you. Please do subscribe to the channel and give your comments. Thank you again.